concrete streets are very different than asphalt streets. And that means the repairs to them are also unique. Roadways made of concrete can last decades. Following proper preparing techniques will extend the life of our concrete streets and reduce the maintenance costs. There are two kinds of repairs we perform on the city's concrete streets. One is a partial depth repair. This requires the removal of the pavement surface, generally through milling. The other kind is a full depth repair. This requires complete removal and replacement of a section of the concrete roadway. Before any repairing can take place, the street needs to be inspected to determine which kinds of repairs are appropriate. Identify the type of work that needs to be done, document it, and mark it with spray paint. Frequently, there are obvious signs to look for, such as random cracks or sunken pavement. If the damage is limited to the crack, the partial depth repair would be appropriate. Mark the crack for milling. Examine joints between concrete slabs as well. Anything that's more than a quarter inch wide should also be marked for milling. Some signs of damage are not as visible. You'll need to sound the pavement area to find voids that have formed beneath the surface. Sounding is done with a chain or hammer. You can hear the difference in sound that a hollowed void beneath the pavement surface creates. Hammering helps you find the limits of the void so you can mark the repair area. Err on the side of caution when marking. You want to make sure the limits you mark cover the entire void. Sometimes concrete streets have metal reinforcement bars connecting the concrete panels, and it is helpful to know where they are before you remove concrete. Use a metal detector to find these metal reinforcement bars and mark the street where they are. Areas that have extensive cracking and other damage may require a full depth repair. Signs to look for include many cracks in the pavement and sunken concrete panels or curbs. These are signs that a partial depth repair will not provide a long-term correction to the problem. Mark off the whole panel or a portion of the panel for removal. Replacing part of a slab will create smaller slabs. Avoid making a new slab that's less than three feet wide because it won't be structurally strong. In those cases, it may make more sense to remove the whole slab than to save a fraction. When angle cuts are needed, like around manholes, avoid creating sharp angles. And always try to make your angles as close to 90 degrees as possible. When you're ready to make partial depth repairs, you'll need a milling machine. A 10 inch wide mill is the typical one you'll want, and it will need to be fitted with teeth suited for grinding Portland concrete. The mill will follow the paint markings on the street, removing about two to three inches of the roadway surface. When the milling's done, review the milled area to make sure all of the failing concrete is removed. You may need to use a small 40 pound jackhammer to complete the removals. Sound the milled area with a hammer to make sure there's no unbound concrete or voids. Then, sandblast the milled area to make sure the new concrete has a good surface to bond to. You'll need to create a bonding material for the surface. That is typically a mixture of Portland and mortar sand, mixed to the consistency of whipped cream. Brush on the bonding material to the prepped surface and make sure the bonding mortar doesn't dry out. You're now ready for the concrete patch. This is not the typical concrete used to pave roadways. A special concrete called 3U18 needs to be mixed on site. Before placing the concrete patch material in the milled area, use compressible inserts to reestablish the crack. Compressible inserts are essentially cardboard covered in wax. Do not use expansion felt for partial depth repairs. Only use them for full depth repairs where needed. The insert will help turn the crack into a new seam between two smaller concrete panels. The managed crack will prevent an unmanaged crack from forming. Shovel in the 3U18 concrete mix and trowel it into the milled area. Make sure to use a small concrete vibrator to help consolidate the 3U18. When that's done, use some of the bonding material to feather out the edges of the patch. This is a critical step in making the patch bond with the existing concrete. Once that's done and the patch surface is smoothed and brushed, apply a heavy coating of concrete curing membrane to the surface. Do not use a water-based membrane. Check with your engineer on the specified curing compound. After the concrete has cured, 
Another crew will place bituminous crack filler into the crack. Your partial depth repair is now complete. Now to making full depth repairs of concrete streets. The failed concrete needs to be removed, so saw the pavement to its full depth. You'll need a large concrete sawing machine for this work. A machine with 60 horsepower or greater is generally required. Once panels are cut, you can remove the old concrete. For the larger pieces, put in anchors and lift the panel out with a crane. Lifting out intact panels prevents damage to the soil underneath, which saves time on the project. When panels are too damaged to lift out, carefully remove them with a forklift or other machinery. Once the damaged roadway is removed, replacing it is very similar to creating a new concrete roadway, with some important exceptions. One of those is the installation of steel reinforcement bars in the remaining concrete road. When the roadway is replaced, the bars will help distribute the weight of vehicles from one concrete panel to the next. Use a gang drill, or a drill that can make holes horizontally, to drill into the adjacent concrete pavement panels. The bars are usually spaced about 12 inches apart, but you can locate them so they'll be under the wheel path of vehicles. There's less of a need to place the bars in the roadway that's used for parking. A rule of thumb is to have an eighth inch diameter of bar to an inch of pavement depth. In the project you see here, the pavement is six inches thick, so three quarter inch bar, or a number six bar, was used. Before putting the bars into the holes, they will need non-shrink grout applied, so they'll adhere the steel bar into the pavement panel. The other end of the bar is greased or oiled to make sure it does not adhere to the new pavement. When it's time to place the concrete, a typical 3A42 MnDOT mix is sufficient. If there are manholes or drains, add a fabric around the rim before pouring the concrete. And once the concrete is in place, sink in bars to help reinforce the drain area. This is important because manholes and drains are areas where cavities and other erosion often take place. After the bleed water has evaporated, trowel and boom the finished concrete as you would in a normal concrete road paving project. Apply the concrete curing membrane. The final step in concrete rehabilitation involves diamond grinding the entire pavement surface. This takes place about four weeks after the patches are made to give some time for the concrete to cure. Diamond grinding creates a uniform concrete paving surface. And since it's being done at the end of a project, the diamond grinding makes transitions from the patches you made to the existing pavement a lot smoother. The end result is a better driving surface for the public. The concrete repairs should extend the life of the roadway by 15 years or more. And that provides a smooth roadway and saves the city money.